Welcome to Security Speakeasy, where we talk about all things security. Today, we're talking about the role of identity in Zero Trust. Hi, I'm Ganesh Balamitran from the product marketing team at Palo Alto Networks. Today, we've invited Imran Bashir, Director of Technical Marketing for Network Security, to join us for this episode of Security Speakeasy to talk about the role of identity in Zero Trust. I'm really excited for this opportunity to dive into identity with Imran. Thank you, Imran, for joining us here today. Thanks, Anish. Excited to be here. All right, Imran. So, Zero trust seems to mean different things to different organizations, or at least the application of zero trust principles. In as simply as you can state it, what does zero trust mean to you? Thanks, Ganesh. So first look at how Palo Alto defines zero trust. The way we define zero trust is that basically secure an organization by eliminating any implicit trust in the system or in the network. And secondly, continuously validating every stage of digital interaction. So let me elaborate a bit on what this means, right? So first of all, zero trust has been a strategy for a long time, but it's becoming a lot more actionable. We see uh, movements into NIST, we see changes into NCCOE, where they're actually going and implementing zero trust in the labs. But basically what zero trust means is that I want to remove any implicit trust, regardless of what the situation is, no matter who the user is no matter where the user is right now, access the network, and no matter what application they're trying to access. And I'm going to do this in the most strict way possible by continuous validation at every stage of the digital interaction, right? And what I mean by that is that, yes, you implement all zero trust policies at the time of authentication before allowing access, but what happens when the user is actually accessing those applications? So to make sure that zero trust is not applied at the time of authentication, but actually we check it all the time, even during the, the digital interaction that's been happening from the user to the device. So you're essentially running the same security regardless of the situation, regardless of the user, and regardless of the device as you go through that. Thanks. Uh, you talked about both uh, authentication as well as continuous inspection. Uh, what role does identity have in Zero Trust? Is it relevant for both these pieces? Excellent question. So the way uh, we look at it is that identity is one of the key pillar in implementing a meaningful zero trust policies, because now you're authoring security policies based on the user, the device. Hence, identity is super, super critical as we start there. And what, what we've been seeing is that most of the organization that you work with, they're actually starting with identity, right? And just look at INT, it has, has changed a lot over the years. For example, as you know, that security teams have been rapidly seeing uh, the change in the network perimeter, expanding from just a single campus secured by, let's say, a firewall uh, for a hybrid environment, and then expanding into like headquarters, branches, data center, and even private and public workloads, and not to mention these remote workers. Now, the problem is that if, if the workforce is contained in an environment, then it's easy. Like you go to one identity source and you can solve that identity problem within that environment. But as we said, this hybrid workforce is now driving the need to have a disparate identity across the world. For example, you could have identity on-prem by using an AD or an LDAP, or you can have identity to secure your SaaS application uh, because they have these needs to do MFA and single sign-on, which means now you have multiple sources for identity, right? That's why, uh, the, the problem of identity is basically not attaching to one source, but now dealing with multiple sources and still authoring those zero trust policies, which are always in sync. For example, if I go to AD or if I go to a cloud service, for example, any cloud IAM provider, and if I change the, the user to group membership, then I need that change to be reflected across my network in my enforcement point within minutes. And that's how we define zero trust, right? Hence, to, to coming back to your question, Ganesh, INT is super important. It is a piece that a lot of organizations are solving. 
And um, the Palo Alto has, has a massive portfolio, for example, user ID, device ID, and different hooks where we actually, we can go and attach to multiple IAM providers and keep all that data in sync all the time. And as I mentioned earlier, if you go and change anything in these IAM providers, either user attributes or group membership, or even if you have multiple formats, for example, using email address authentication or using email authentication, we can normalize all of those attributes and come back and give it to our enforcement point within minutes to make sure that zero trust is actionable and it is working in practice. Nice. So pretty much identity is integral to, to zero trust from the way you're describing it. Like every piece of uh, zero trust is dependent on organizations having a great uh, fundamental identity architecture. Um, so this is our second episode on Zero Trust. Uh, can you speak to some of the changes since the last time we did a security speakeasy on Zero Trust? Has identity gained an importance? Like, is this a bigger deal now? Absolutely. I mean, if, if you look at it from a bigger lens, from a Zero Trust, a lot has changed um, since we last talked about that. For example, I'll, I'll take a step back and, and just go through the order, but uh, like in May 2021, the White House uh, sent out this executive order for its entities to go and start implementing Zero Trust. And by January in 2022, uh, the budget was released. And due to that budget, NIST drafted this document called SP 800-207, which means that all the organizations have now a blueprint or a white paper uh, to go start referencing these Zero Trust architectures. Now, what has changed since, since last time we met? NCCOE, which is the, the lab arm of the NIST, has now called up upon maybe around 20 vendors uh, to implement a very comprehensive zero trust architecture, which includes INT providers, which include security vendors, which includes tons of different things, including SIM vendors, to go and make a, a complete, a comprehensive zero trust architecture, right? And guess what? The first thing that are that they're solving is identity. Because as we said, INT solves a lot of a security policy enforcement uh, needs for zero trust. And by having this complete complete architecture of INT-based zero trust, uh, we're making great progress. Um, NCCU is making great progress. And that's why, uh, as I said, a lot has changed since the last time we met and a bunch of advancements that are done in the industry is actually driving the need for zero trust to push forward. So it's not just the industry. We are also seeing, obviously, government getting involved, uh, regulations, recommendations, standards, and I think that would be great for overall helping uh, organizations kind of keep one step ahead of adversaries. Um, but what would you recommend as you know actionable things that you would suggest to help organizations always stay a step ahead of uh, adversaries? Yeah, thanks, Anish. I, I would say that... Uh... Uh, pretty much zero trust has been a strategy and it used to be a long-term plan for a lot of enterprises. But the tools that we have today, uh, the ease of connecting these different products to consume identity from your choice of IAM provider, uh, and also the enhanced security policies that we have uh, across the products, right? It really makes zero trust actionable and very easy to deploy, right? And we're here to help. We have, uh, we have, we have experts that can go and help you design zero trust. We have experts that can actually help you roll out zero trust into multiple phases as you need, right? And the tools are also very much enhanced. For example, one of the key element for zero trust um, is also NOC, because NOC is the place where you go and see that, hey, is zero trust working as you design? And I would, I would invite you to go check out our XIM products, which is very enhanced uh, which can consume telemetry uh, from multiple products. It's very enhanced with playbooks that can actually go back and take actions to make sure that Zero Trust is not just deployed at the time of design, but it's always operating as you would like it to be operating uh, in the network. Hey, Imran, this has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you for joining us at Security Speakeasy to talk about the role of identity in Zero Trust. Thanks for having me, Ganesh. And thanks everyone for watching. If you like the show, click the like button, subscribe to this channel, and visit paloaltonetworks.com.